right, phase two of my uh, my chicken coop. So phase one, I got all the way done with the uh, chicken wire underneath everything, dirt on top of it. I'll let the chicken scratch the dirt level, and then I may or may not top it with river stones uh, just to slow down dogs and coyotes. So while I went into town today, I, I took and I made a rough draft. Hope you all can see this of what my chicken coop is going to be. Uh, in addition, I bought uh, three um, 4x8 sheets of uh, hardy plank, and that's cement board, as well as six treated 2x4s that came out to $194 plus the candy bar that was in there. So, uh, now, so let's talk about tractor supply because their coops start around $400. I'm halfway there. And uh, to be honest, I've owned two of them, and they uh, fall apart in the weather. So... <laughs> Uh, you know the the rails, the way they uh, the uh, and it, it's not very thick plywood. The way the plywood of the tractor supply fits into the rails, it holds water, and then it, it just forever wicking water into there. So uh, while I am probably going to end up at the same price, four hundred dollars for these chickens, I'm going to end up with a chicken coop made of treated two by fours and fully caulked and hardy plank, which is cement, which means termites can't get to it. Um, in addition, I, I've already ordered some of the, I've got some little round screen portholes for each one of the, the boxes. Uh, I've got a little stained glass window I broke I'm going to cut up and use in the chicken coop. Uh, and then I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do for the decorative part. But I also already have tin that hasn't cost me anything. So if you, I factored in the tin and the little windows and all of this, I am going to be near the tractor supply. So what I'm saying is if you've got the tractor supply coop and you're going to put it in the cage um, and it's covered and uh, you've already got it sheltered, maybe that's a good investment for you. Uh, I, I expect you get four or five, six years out of it. Uh, but man, gosh, everyone that I bought has fallen apart pretty quick. So uh, anyway, I, I don't want to have to do this twice. Um, and even if the, these chickens stop producing, I'm, I'm going to... Uh, get some more I really like this brown uh, ramen I'll do it again uh, these chickens I've had all kinds bantams are pretty smart do not get white chickens out uh, in the country because the uh, everybody everything notices it and eats them get uh, this color black or brown chickens so they're telling me that I put them up too early and uh, they're upset so now, I am not worried about um, length of chicken run. I'm not worried about a lot of things folks would be into. How many chickens can I put in my coop? They're going to have people are going to have. I don't care because I let them free range. We all got predators. So my chickens live their best lives. Uh, <clears throat> again, they, I, ha, I have learned that uh, it's not the wild animals that I have to worry about. It's the neighbor dogs. <laughs> and not my noise, my direct neighbors. Dogs I've never seen will... Well, come run miles to kill your chickens. And uh, I guess coons and whatnot, and snakes. So snakes and dogs are the things I've seen. So this evening, um, if I can get done here, uh, the framing and how I'm thinking of all that. So uh, this is the supplies, the, uh, the pallets, which I don't like to use uh, because they don't last a long time, but I might use them for trim, I don't know. Those were free. Uh, I had them throw in the pallet that the hardy plank came in. They argued with me a little bit, but I hemmed and hawed. That, that's treated, and it's already cut to four foot. So I'm going to use those. And um, then I'm going to take advantage of some natural parts of this tree, uh, I think. Now, I want to move in the food box for the horses because they uh, break into it on a regular basis and cause me problems. But if I just put it in the chicken coop, the horses will get in there and they will wreck that coop. They will wreck it. So I need uh, the door on the coop itself and um, a little uh, safety door where uh, the horses can't get in and out. But I'm taking advantage of these mesquite trees. I've got... It's all nestled in the mesquite trees around the back side of it. That's where the water will go. So basically, it'll be sheltered from the cattle and the horses. Uh, I might put a fence through there to, to close it in a little more. Over here, I could do a little hobbit door or something like that. 
so um, I'm taking advantage of that. I'm gonna let those chickens out for a little bit more. They're, they're telling me that they're not done with the day. And I'm okay with that. So uh, I'm not gonna remove this panel. If you bought the uh, ready-made, this panel is where the chicken run ties in and the hutches sits on the outside. My hutch is gonna sit on the inside, as I mentioned, because uh, I wanna hide this thing from the horses. I'm tired of them snooping around. They'll wreck heaven and earth for one little mouthful of bird seed. And it is annoying to me. But that's the way horses are. Cattle are that way too. They'll, they'll get in. But cattle will wander off where a horse will eat till it gets sick. Uh, it's an odd behavior. Horses are smarter than cattle. Maybe the uh, lack of intellect is good for cattle. They kind of forget what they're doing and they, they wander away. Where a horse is like, oh my god, I don't have access to this grain. I'm going to eat till I'm sick. All right. Okay, guys, you're telling me you're not done yet? For today, I'm fine with that. Don't go out there and get killed. All right. So these are pretty good-sized chickens, and people are telling me uh, six inches is what these chickens need to turn around. And uh, I only want four, and they give me too many eggs as it is. <laughs> Oh, uh, also, I've only had them about a week, and they have drastically reduced my scorpion and spider and insect load around the, the uh, house, which is what I wanted. Anyway, I've been messing around with these roosts, and they, they need room to be able to turn around at night in their roost. So, 8 inches isn't enough. 48 would be enough. So, if I build at 48... That actually overlaps the metal bars a little bit. So I'm going to end up cutting a little bit out of here for the uh, so they can lay their eggs. So their nesting hutches will be out through where I can get through the back side. The inside will be their hutch. And uh, I'll have a little ramp that will let them come up into it. I might mirror this this pitch too as well for the rain and just run the rain off. We'll see. All right, that's my plans. So doing some quick math here, you know, this this was the pellet that hold the hardy plank. So it's already 48. And uh, the chickens like to roost. Four of them, they like 12 inches a piece. So it looks to me like if I would just pass through that much of this, then I would end up with a, uh, I'd end up with this much of it being floor for the uh, chicken coop with 12 inches or so sticking out into the atmosphere. I like that idea. Let's let's work on that. Somebody already took the time to cut it all up for me, do the work for that. So I appreciate that very much. And uh, this this is probably ground contact treated wood I'm gonna guess and uh, this is junk but uh, it's the junk that's there so I'm gonna use it in addition I had uh, I picked up uh, you know four or five pallets there and I have I have a deconstruction blade there is no easy way to get those out <laughs> to reuse pallet wood so uh, I'm not opposed to using good underneath all of this is uh, good treated uh, two by fours so we'll figure that out. But let's get the bottom in there and uh, do that part of it. And I feel pretty good about that. All right, new day back on the chicken coop. It is hot, everybody. And admittedly, hot is my wheelhouse. I like hot. But uh, you got to work really smart in this weather this hot or else you'll overheat. Could even die. Uh, so anyway, slow going, but I'm going. So what I'm going to do today, well, I am going to go ahead and continue on with my uh, custom-built coop, which maybe will be about half, maybe, of what a coop uh, bought from Tractor Supply, a small coop. Uh, now, the large coops, they were a 1000 bucks, so I know I'm going to beat that. But I'm going to build it inside of the cage because I've got a lot of uh, predators and risk, night risk more than day risk. Um, but anyway, I'm going to go ahead, let's go ahead and cut the... Uh, the grid out this part the outside part let me show you down here so you can visualize 
So the outside part here will be the egg box for me to reach in and get eggs. So I'm going to guess I'm, I'm going to uh, cut all these out and then bend that and build the roof line to match uh, all of that. And that way if something pries up the roof, I'll still have the grid. Maybe. I, I don't know. We'll see. But nonetheless, I probably won't cut that all the way off. Let's get that done. All right, let's go ahead and put that other piece in and kind of get it balanced in here and figure out exactly what we're gonna do. So last night, uh, these are Brahma, chick uh, Brahma chickens, so they're large, but I measured them while they're on the roost. And the jump, they didn't use the other roost to get up, they just jumped. So they needed a little room for their wings to get up, some clearance. And they snuggled into 36, but when they turn around, they need, you know, 48. They need room to turn, adjust, snuggle in for the night. So this is 48 wide. I'm good with that. This part here will be the roost part, 35, 36. And I might even encro encroach on a little bit. And then that will be for, for the nesting box. So I think I could just cut this end off. bother pulling them if you don't have to just drive them in They're, the nails are rusty and bad and whatnot so let me see if that'll fit in there now Well, this didn't end up being a waste to cut anyway because it wouldn't fit in the way I, I envisioned it. Now, I could have broken out one of these slats and got it in. I'm just being stubborn. But the, now you can visualize that will be the roost. This will be the egg box. Let me continue building. The next thing I'm going to do is put in a proper height post there. And uh, I do have a log for that. So let's get that thing in. Hmm. Tells me how deep to bury it. Just eyeballing level. It looks good. So if I dig my hole that deep, it'll be perfect. Let's dig my hole.
Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Now I'm satisfied with the post in there. I'm satisfied with the pallet, rough pallet sitting there. Let me go ahead and cut some two by fours and make some frames so that I can frame up inside. This will be the door somewhere here for them to get in at night. There'll be a cleaning door over here on the side. And I've got a little stained glass window, some things to make this look nice so I could peek in. I got lucky in that I was able to wedge a two by four between this. Not quite made for it, but just about. Now, when I go to tear this all apart, obviously somebody will have to solve all that. Hopefully not me. So it's a uh, it's Sunday, which means there's no place around here that sells uh, screws. <laughs> so I've got to make do with what I have here. And I'm hoping once I screw these in that it'll draw this straight and true. And then I'll be able to move forward from there. Uh, the next phase after this, i got to make sure I leave a little room for the... Uh, for the hardy plank to go in and i believe so i'm gonna have to screw through here and that'll be fine i'm fine with that let's go ahead and put this all together all right Just, you know oh good there's a knot here man that makes me feel good So I'm going to use slats in the floor and the pallet. Here in Texas, heat uh, heat is the problem and not winter cold, right? <laughs> so uh, anyway, I'm designing this so that I could throw a rug in there in the winter and then just, uh, or a piece of cardboard in the winter and then just throw it in the garden in the spring and move forward from there. So that's my intention with the uh, with this design. These are not treated. They're the only thing that's not. They're just part of the pallet, which is pretty much junk wood. So I might end up having one day to chase uh, to chase all of this with uh, cedar or something like that. Just eyeballing, making sure that I can uh, close this up. Probably should measure this. Let me make sure that this isn't more than 48. I'm sure it's not, but let me... Yeah, you guys think that it's 11 or... 12, it's lunchtime, oh, it's o'clock at the very least. All right, let me make this one screw here. Oh, yeah. In fact, that's 48 there. Let's talk about a little, adding a little charm to my chicken coop here. So I think I'm going to make this window a uh, set, set in window. You won't be able to open it. I'm going to put it on the back side here so I can look through the cage, see what's going on in the chicken coop. And then to clean it, I've got these plantation shutters. And I think the plantation shutters will go right here. And uh, they just fit. I might need to shift them a little bit for the pitch of the roof. But I'll need to make sure the roof goes right to the top. The other option was to put the plantation shutters here, which they definitely would fit. But the problem is, is uh, then the gate comes down in front of the door for the chickens to go up at night. I kind of wanted them to come up on this side because that's where the roosting boxes are going to be the nesting boxes and i want them just to be able to come up and get into the nesting boxes there 
So that's a little bit of charm that I'm going to add. So uh, now that I know I need to really get up there, and I guess I could take, depends how I build this wall. I really want to. I think I'm going to get a, I think I'm going to get the uh, saw out. And uh, go ahead and cut these off a little bit, make a little room so that uh, it'll fit there. And then uh, the doors will come up against. And then, in addition, I'll have a grid here so if something breaks through, it won't be able to crash the grid. Let's get that part done. That part's easy. I, I want to go all the way up to the top. Room for tin. Let me get my tin. I've got plenty of tin. This is just a piece I'm using for distance. So. That'll let me know uh, if my plantation doors are going to fit. For sure they do over here, just fine. Now what about here? Well, they, they fit. As I suspected, it would be a better fit if I had cut the, that little half inch piece off of there. So let me do that. Yes, well. You know, I could use I could use tin down on the bottom. It'd be easy to slide out every year and wash. But uh, I'm going to use mesh during the summer. We cut these off here. Make a little room for a door to close against it. I haven't decided what I'm going to do for uh, for screen and mesh here to keep things out, but I've got plenty of screen. I thought I'd fold screen along that, but I think I'll put pallet wood across the top there for now. So to hit that thing, I need to add in the 2x4, because uh, the base will be on the 2x4, 34 and a half, that'll get me there. It's heavy too. <laughs> All right, let me double check that other measurement. It's been a minute. I said by 40. Let me double check and see if 40 is going to do it. Yeah, 40 clears the little nuts and bolts and all that good stuff. 40 it is. What every chicken coop needs is a stained glass window. Do some plunge cuts, maybe. You can do it. Carbide tip doesn't like that, I'll tell you that much. I'll have to count the price of a new Diablo blade when I'm done with this nonsense.
Oop. Sorry, Internet, if I blew that in your eyes. Things happen, though. Well, isn't that gonna be nice, Internet? Those chickens will have a better house than I will when they're done. Let me tell you, this little guy is getting heavy. All right. Now I'm just accommodating the uh, two by four that I have in there, and I'm just eyeballing down to make sure it's all even. I put it at the top. Let's put together the back wall. Once I have one wall in, life will be good. that I've got it the wall built here the first wall <laughs> four more a top and a bottom I got a storm coming in too so I've got some Italian plaster here that I've ordered in as a sample it's a bit dark but underneath the tree I think it'll be the perfect color for uh, for this chicken coop in the house I found it a bit uh, too dark a little oppressive but it'll make this chicken coop disappear, I think. And if I don't have enough Italian plaster in here, then uh, that'll be all right. I'll use gray or something else on two walls. Oh, 
Now this one I have to do before I, I put it in because I can't get to it. It's behind the fence. I've got two panels like that that'll be behind the fence. So I'll have to do them now. A good test to see how, how well this weather is outside too. Kind of like, really like the wood grain coming through. I'm going to guess this was maybe a quart and it was already half gone. Might be able to get two sides, maybe. Earlier I used a cutoff wheel to do all that, but they say these will nip through, these little pliers. I bought them specifically, they're called Nipix. You might have been around for a little while. Let's see. Let's see, Internet. Oh, they, they do not lie. Wow. Now I don't do tool reviews, but oh my gosh. This one deserves it. I would say this is safer. Look, I'm not using any eyewear than the uh, cutoff wheel because I'm not throwing sparks. My forearms are getting a little tired, but not bad. But those are really consistent where the cutoff wheel, I was bouncing around a little bit. All right. Well, now I can build the hen box the way that I want without regard to what's in my way. I'm happier with that. Planners, planner boxes, and cut them out like that so I can peel them out and uh, clean them and put them back in. Well, that's one idea. And I think that I like that idea so much that that's what I'm gonna go with, rather than build them in where they're stuck. And uh, I don't know, it looks like I could get three or four. So I'll get an extra one or two of those in here. And then if somebody starts brooding, I don't mind if people brood on brood chicks. I like it in the spring though, right? So, but if somebody sits there and starts brooding, I can babysit them. So uh, let me go ahead and start doing something here cool with the, uh, with the boxes. Let me look at my tin. I have full-size tin, of course, in the back. That's not bad, right? That will, that will overlap just fine if I have a couple that width, and I think I do. All right. Well, I like this idea. Don't let the horses know that I've grabbed their bucket. So look, I've got three trick chickens. If I did these, I could fit four of those in there. If I did these, I could fit three. I might be able to fit four. One. Two. 
three. I could fit four of the five gallon buckets as well. And you know, they got three gallon buckets in this size. Maybe that's what I'll end up doing. All right, so this idea is gonna work. Let me put the horse buckets back before I end up with a mutiny. 